Good evening, y'all. <laughs> Welcome back to another Sunday night. In answer to your question, Chris, I do intend this to be a, ge a, genu a genuine 15 minutes, if I can keep it to it. We'll, we'll see. It's not really my forte. Hi, Dave. Yes, well, it, if I tell one story, it'll be a 25 minute at least. I'm trying to keep this brief. Uh, the real truth is, hi, good evening, good to see you on the Sunday evening. Um, I spent about eight hours in the car today getting a uh, someone very close to me uh, a vaccine shot. Super, super cool. Uh, but I don't have an enemy to do another, you know, even a even a Jeff 90 minutes or, you know, two and a half hours. Uh, it seems like a bit much. So, so since I did make some progress on the miniature motorized winch project during the week, I thought I would just pop on and say hi and give you the updates and then go away. I honestly, I was going to do what I did a few weeks ago when I like made like a one minute video that was like, no stream this week, bye. And we got home, I think, 25 minutes ago. So by the time that I made the video and put it up, it would have been seven, and I figured I would just come on and say hi and see who was here. So, hello. <laughs> good, good to see you. It is really nice to, like, say hi. But then I need to, like, go walk the dog and eat dinner and things like that. So, some brief, some, in theory, brief updates. And you two, Dave and Chris, you are, <laughs> are some of my constant uh, reminders that I am a little bit more loquacious than I think I am. So, keep me honest, and I'll give you the updates. So... Um, Y'all will recall, and some of you will have seen this in the little mini video that went out earlier in the week, um, but this is now the version of the 3D printed hand winch, yeah? So this was the version we were playing with last week, right, with this frame. This is the point where that ratchet wheel was attached and where the pawl was attached to that. Um, we developed a little uh, experimental piece that we could put like a cotter pin or a retaining pin on to sort of hold that shaft in place and all of that oh and we also we also experimented with these 608 skateboard bearings as a better bearing surface than just like pla on pla right so that's what this has evolved from this is winch version i'm not gonna give <laughs> you know i was like it's winch version 2.0 but as we know i'm the worst about version numbers so let's just say this is the newest version of the winch huh um, so the improvements there, right? We've got two of those 608 skateboard bearings inside the frame there. We've got the little notched shaft at the end. And I can zoom in, you can actually see that notch. So there's just a little indent there and this retaining pin is holding that in place. Um, and it's, it's just, you can probably see there's just a little bit clear of the bearing itself, but even if this shaft were to slip back and forth and contact the bearing, it doesn't cause a ton of friction. The thread as before that we're using the same crappy twine uh, is just through a hole in the shaft um, and then the rest of the mechanism is fairly similar to what it was before. Um, I've improved the threading on this bolt a little bit but the rest of this works essentially as before. Um, and so the way it works is uh, and I'll, I'll put this under load in a second here over on the micro stage, but you'll recall and this will only really work if I have this under under some amount of tension. So I'm just going to hold this string taut off camera here as if it was a load we were pulling on, right? If I rotate the handle clockwise, the friction tightens on the, the handle screws into the shaft, tightens on those two friction bearings. And at some point it will start to, yeah, there we go. Once, once those bearings are tight enough, we'll start getting clicks in the ratchet as this thing pulls tight, as the friction between uh, this handle piece here and the washer and the washer behind the ratchet wheel and the shaft is tight enough that it can't slip anymore. We start to ratchet closed. And then when we stop, of course, uh, the tension that I'm holding here, our load will attempt to unwind this, but the pawl catches the ratchet wheel and so it can't turn. And of course, the big improvement now is that as I loosen the handle, and it still has to be under load. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. As I loosen the handle, right, we slowly reduce the, the we were unscrewing this cap on the shaft, right, which reduces the amount of friction on these two friction washers, um, which allows this shaft to slip slightly against them. But that slipping action tightens us back against the handle. So as I turn the shaft, the, as I turn the handle, the shaft is allowed to let out. As I rotate the handle the other way, it's allowed to click tight. But when I release the handle, there's no way that this shaft can undo itself. And that's the clever thing about this mechanism is it, it once you let go of the handle, it cannot move. I'm, I don't know if you can tell I'm holding this under significant tension, but it's still easy to let that tension off. Yeah? So let's take this over to the micro stage and I'll do, if that, if that didn't make any sense, and I don't know that it made a whole lot of sense to me, um, I am going to do a demo with it actually lifting a load to really, really drive the point home. 
And then I'll show off a little bit more of the other hardware I've picked up this week for future experiments. We'll talk about what the next steps are. And then if I'm being very good, we will wrap it up. <laughs> but that's, that's the goal for tonight. So there's the winch. I played a little with the brightness and contrast and things on uh, on this crappy cam, so hopefully things are a little bit more visible. You know, I wonder. I've been so I've been using this uh, one pound of solder as my test weight for the purposes of tonight. I'm wondering if just a pair of vice grips is enough enough weights to prove the point. Let's see if those will suspend there. Of course, they're gonna un untwist the twine. But, so, here we go, so you can sort of see my, here, let me get rid of my face here, that's not the important part. <laughs> so, I've got my, got my winch sort of clamped down to the micro stage here. As I rotate the handle in the clockwise direction, friction belt tightens, and we should start to see... There we go. Clicks. And we can elevate that, uh, that clamp up and out of the way here. Well, we can reposition a little bit. There we go. Here, let's get that slightly more sensible angle. There we go. And now, now we'll see if this is not enough weight to overcome the friction in this system. It may not come down on its own, but I'm hoping it will. Yeah. So as I rotate the other direction, we can get that. We get a smooth descent. And as I mentioned last time, and I, in the video on on Monday that I think I put up, um, the point of the mechanism, right? Even though the action of lowering is that those those friction bearings, you know, tightening and loosening and, you know, I you loosen it by rotation and then the shaft tightens itself. It doesn't feel jerky at all. It doesn't feel like loosen and then tighten and then loosen and then tighten. It's a very smooth action. Right? So ratcheting up, ratcheting up is also smooth. Of course, you do feel the, the ratchet tightening. And that goes, goes up and out of sight. And then uh, we, as we release it down, it comes back down with no problem. And of course, if you go too far, you end up counterwinding this barrel a little bit. So you do have to stop at some point. But yeah, piece of cake. So that's the functional winch. I'm super excited. Um, so of course, the, the next step is to try and start getting some automation and some motors onto it and turn it into an actual system. Um, and that's the purpose of the other hardware that I've picked up this week to experiment with. I was going to experiment with tonight, but to be perfectly honest, 15 minutes is feeling just right for this evening. So what I am imagining for this setup here, I'm going to move this camera back out of the way, come and look at our truss setup again. You know, other than the fact this is a really crappy camera, this like camera arm is really helpful for this kind of thing. Um, so, right, on our on our first electric here, if you will, we still have our kabuki pipe, and I'll probably leave that there. But it'll be a good stand-in for, you know, what the um, sort of size and effect of the um, motorized line sets might be, which might be, you know, a truss, um, or maybe a more simplified line set up top with the uh, winch mechanism attached to it that'll be lowering some other batten or line set or what have you underneath it. Um, and what I imagine that looks like, and if anyone has, as always, if anyone has better ideas, I am, I'm all for them. But what I'm imagining is, um, because we will have a fair amount of mechanical advantage in the winch mechanism ultimately, um, and because I don't want to do too overkill of a thing, we'll probably have a single ratchet mechanism, say on one end of the, of each motorized line set with a servo motor attached to that. So servo motor single like ratcheting, ratcheting mechanism, and that'll be coupled. So this part of our our device will have a coupler here, or really we'll probably do away with this barrel in time and put a coupler there to another something that looks a lot like this kabuki pipe, although probably a little bit more, um, a little bit more precise. Oh gosh. Remember when I said I liked this camera arm? Can I take that back? <laughs> there we go. Um, so we'll have what I imagine is like a long shaft coupled to that ratchet mechanism, and it will have three or four uh, small uh, winding barrels attached to it, right? So we have one mechanism here that's doing all the ratcheting and the lifting, and then we'll have two or three, maybe three or four spools that are whatever our stand-in for aircraft cable is, whatever our line or twine or whatever it happens to be. Um, Dave, you make a very good point, right, which is, uh, will the pipes and units have enough weight for them to lower themselves effectively? It's a really good point. Um, I'm not sure. We won't really know until we build it. Um, 
from and one thing I can sort of experiment with, and we'll have to sort of see how the friction of the system affects things, but feeling out how this mechanism works now, even with a relatively light amount of pressure, now that we have those new bearings in, it still feels fairly good to lower. And we can actually get, we can get quantitative about that, right? Now the bearing on this is nothing fancy. You can see it's just looped over a piece of truss at the top of the stage there. Um, but I'm not having to put particularly much pressure on this system before it is, it is able to lower down. So I'm cautiously optimistic that we will be able to get the, the battens, if you will, to lower with just um, pipe weight and, and fixture weight. Um, of course, they're not gonna, they're not gonna super want to fly empty without some extra help. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. So, but to, to assist in that, that's a great transition there, Dave. Uh, I've been thinking about what this, um, what this, we're gonna have to come up with some new terminology for these things, what this pipe, which will hold the spools, um, will be made of. You know, so uh, some kind of small pipe with 3D printed little spools that can hold our, our, our vertical lines that are picking up our lower pipe, which is our line set. And I think actually maybe, for, now that I'm saying out loud, maybe both for this uh, operating pipe and for our batten, um, I picked up to experiment with a little bit of this stuff. This is just 3 16 standard plated rod from Menards. Uh, it's super cheap. This is like less than two bucks for a three foot spool. So it, it's going to be a little bit harder to work with than the brass rod scraps we were playing with for the Kabuki drop. Um, but I think it will be a, a significantly more rigid. And actually, once we get to like implementing the batten, I think this might be nice because it does have a little bit more weight to it than the brass does. Um, so this, I, I, I think this might be our, might be our candidate for um, the operating pipe and the batten. Now we will have to refigure out, we won't be able to use the existing Thomas couplers um, to couple the mechanism to these, right? Which we, which Thomas so nicely developed for us. Um, but that's okay, we know we, we have to develop some other coupling regardless. Like this would have to, we, we won't be able to reuse the Thomas coupler idea because we're not coupling to a servo motor anymore. We're coupling to the end of a barrel shaft. Um, so there would, would need, need to be some work anyway, so I think I feel okay about committing to doing a little bit more work on this guy. Um, so presumably this shaft will be supported on the near end by the actual coupling to the, the, the ratchet, I'm gonna have to square my terminology up at some point to the ratchet barrel here. So the shaft comes right out of here effectively. Um, but, uh, it's also, of course, going to need some support somewhere else along the system, much like we did with these hooks for the Kabuki drop. Um, and I picked 3 16 shaft for this new stuff that I picked up specifically because it is the same size as the brass rod we've been using. So in theory, we could repurpose our existing hook architecture. Might be kind of interesting. Um, but it's, it's not the least frictionful design. We mostly got away with it for the Kabuki drop just because, like, that was a relatively low weight system. So the other thing I picked up, which might be fun to play with, is some of these guys. Um, these, of course, these are the 608 bearings we're using for the winch itself. And that's an option, right? But I, I fear that these are probably too, too, uh, these are probably more bearing than is necessary to support the bulk of the machinery. So I picked up some of these. These are a uh, three quarters plus change by half inch by one inch nylon spacer. Um, also from Menards, they look like this. They're meant to be, I think, standoffs for various screws that you might tighten onto things or, you know, use, use as a, a screw standoff between two pieces. But they happen to be a fairly close fit. You can see their spec is an internal diameter of 0.194. And this is a 3 16 rod, so that's 0.1875 inches. So that's what, 0 0.007 inches, seven mil, seven thou, if you will, between the two. So that's a fairly close fit on there. Um, now this is just nylon, right? It's not like it's it's Teflon or PTFE or you know anything that's actually designed to be slippy, but as a cheap manufactured solution, this might also be an interesting bearing surface for us to play with is to integrate a couple of these into a 3D print that would then hang off of a piece of truss and be a bearing surface there. 
<laughs> Didn't want to get a spool of nylon and print your own. You know, I've never tried printing with nylon, and these were 70 cents each, so I just grabbed a bunch. But we could. I mean, listen, I, we're always looking for ways to make things more complicated, I know. So that, that could happen at some point. Um, so yeah, so thinking about bearings will be a thing. I think about what those spool designs are that get mounted to our operating shaft will be that, that pick up the line. Thinking about what those operating lines themselves are that drop down from the spools to our, <laughs> our batten, if you will. Um, and then how all of this connects together. Like, are there, are there hooks? Are there tiny chains? Do we put tiny turnbuckles on our batten? You know, how, how fanciful and how much verisimilitude are we looking to have in this thing? I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, thinking about shafts, thinking about bearings, thinking about converting the, um, the winch design from this, which is sort of a desktop model to one that's meant to mount on a truss and be more compact will be a thing. And then revving up a few iterations of it and installing some battens on the micro stage. And that's where my head's at this week and the progress that we've made so far. So yeah, Chris, exactly what you say. That's what we're going to call for tonight. <laughs> I just wanted to pop on, let you know I'm still alive and to say hi and, and hope everyone's doing well. Um, washing your hands, doing all good. Um, I'm going to go walk my dog. Y'all are great. Be safe. I will see you next week. 7 p.m. Sunday. Twitter, like, follow, subscribe. You know all the things. Bye.